I am the man who once had AIDS, an HIV. I don't make this statement as an empty boast. To be honest, I don't think I believe, fully believed it until the New England Journal of Medicine published the case report about me in the February 2009, um, almost two years after I got cured. There's nothing like having a respected medical journal talking about you to drive home a point. <laughs> Since being cured, I've had, I have mostly gone on quietly with my life. I can understand if some of you might think I would have shouted from the rooftops if that happened to me. I've always been a pretty private person, so it was initially satisfying. I was initially satisfied with just being cured. It wasn't until I looked at my experience in the context of the bigger picture that I realized that I need to tell my story. By sharing it, I hope that I can bring some new optimism to the fight against HGB. So how does a man from Seattle, Washington, come to be an, an, an identified with a medical milestone in a city half a, half a world away from his birthplace? After, living, after a European trip, trip in the early 90s, woke me up to the possibility of advertising, or adventuring into other cultures. So I decided to try a few places. After living in several European cities, I eventually discovered that Berlin was a better fit for me. I moved there permanently in 1993. I was attending a German language school in Berlin in 1995 when a friend convinced me that I needed to get tested for HIV. I did. I was positive. My reaction was like that of many others who were diagnosed at the time, when the protein inhibitors were a bit before Healthcare. 
Healthcare System. It wasn't until 2006 when progressive fatigue resulted in my being referred to an oncologist. The bone marrow, the bone marrow biopsy he performed showed it, uh, that I had acute myeloid leukemia. You didn't have to be a specialist to know that that was really bad. Before I could spend much time wrestling with my mortality again, the oncologist can contacted the University, University Hospital. I was admitted the next day under the care of another oncologist named Dr. Darlutra, who started me on standard chemotherapy. I was terrified after I realized that HIV medications were a walk in the park compared to the obstacle race that was awaiting me. It seemed like chemotherapy wanted to remind me that treatment for a deadly disease can be miserable. It mocked me, what? Protease inhibitors upset your stomach, tummy once? Well, get a load of this. I developed pneumonia at one point when my immune system was weakened by chemotherapy. When I survived that scare, I had to stop my third round of chemotherapy. Halfway through, when I developed sepsis, a bacterial, a bacterial infection that attacked my entire body. I could have died, and for, or fortunately I had some great doctors. After a long stay, I was released from the hospital. My leukemia appeared to be in remission, but there was still a concern because I hadn't been able, able to complete all of the chemotherapy due to my complications. Since Dr. Huger had recommended a little vacation after my chemotherapy, I took off to Italy. The museums and beaches of Genoa, Genoa were, after all, just what the doctor ordered. It was good to push death to the distant horizon. In addition to having excellent advice, Dr. Huger had a revolutionary treatment idea. Although not an HIV specialist, Dr. Huger was aware of the discussion in HIV research conferences at the time about something called CCR5 receptor mutation. The CCR5 receptor is part of most people's T cells. It allows the HIV virus to attach to the T cell and sub subsequently infect the cell, spreading the disease. People who are born to mutations in the CCR5 receptor appear resistant to HIV infections, but they are rare. Only 1% of, of the Northern European population is this lucky. So why am I telling you this? Well, another treatment for leukemia would be, would be to wipe out the cancerous immune system and replace it with healthy stem cells from a donor. Dr. Huger thought that if a stem cell transplant was necessary, why not use a compatible donor who had the CCR5 mutation? The idea that if my cancerous HIV susceptible immune system was completely wiped out and replaced, by, replaced with an HIV resistant line of stem cells, not only would my leukemia be treated, but HIV might be cleared from the body. I thought the possibility to, rid, uh, to be rid of cancer and HIV at the same time, who could say no to that chance? To strike back a disease, disease that killed some of my closest friends. Who could say no to be a part of something so groundbreaking? Who could say no? Me, that's who. <laughs> I said no. <laughs> Now let me put this in perspective. When this was first proposed to me, proposed to me by one of Dr. Hughes' colleagues, I was still recovering from toxic cancer drugs. 
I came close to dying. By comparison, my 11 years with, of HIV treatment had been a catwalk, or cakewalk. <laughs> <laughs> and stem cell transplants are very, very risky procedures. Did I really have to go through this extra hell? I chose not to do it since I had been recently told that my leukemia was in remission. Some might call me a different cult patient. That's not true. I usually did follow my doctor's advice. Remember, I did go to Italy. Italy. I followed up with my doctors when I returned from Italy. My HEV was well controlled with medications. A series of follow-up bone marrow biopsy, biopsies showed the cancer to be in remission. Until the biopsy of January of 2007 showed that my leukemia was back. Initially, initial attempts at a different chemotherapy were not successful. The stem cell transplant became a viable option. Dr. Hutter searched for a donor, one with the rare mutation in the tissue was compatible with mine. It was like looking for a needle in a stand haystack. The 67th specimen that he screened proved to be a match. I had to undergo full body radiation to wipe out any of my body's remaining immune system before receiving the transplant. And also I had to have um, further chemotherapy. Um, I last took my HEV medications on the day of my stem cell transplant. The result? There was no detectable HEV in my system. My T cells incre counts increased. I thrived. I went to the gym. With HEV, I had developed wasting syndrome. Without HEV, I developed muscles. I was looking good. <laughs> I felt good. <laughs> I kept feeling good until early 2008. During a visit to my grandmother, I, w I saw a local doctor for what I thought was norovirus. You remember that one? The cruise ship virus? Back then, it was getting more attention than, than some other viruses I know of. In his workup, the doctors discovered that I had no platelets. Not a good sign for some that he was my history. I quickly returned to Berlin for an expected bone marrow, barrel, bone marrow biopsy. By the way, I have to compliment the German doctors on their great technique. A bone marrow biopsy is very painful, but they did everything they could to ease my discomfort. My biopsy confirmed that the leukemia had returned, not my HEV. Seven months after my stem cell transplant off HEV medications, and I was still undetectable. Well, the HEV anyway. In February 2008, I went, underwent my second stem cell transplant from the same donor. My recovery from the first transplant was complicated. Oh, from the second transplant, sorry. I became delirious, and I had to have a brain biopsy done. <coughs> they, um, when I got the biopsy, they, uh, um, they failed to, uh, stitch me up correctly, and, uh, and, um, then I, was even more delirious than before, and uh, they realized that um, I had uh, um, an air pocket. They left an air pocket and just filled up the brain. So, yeah, it was bad. Um, I have been left with some neurologic problems that require ongoing care. My life is far from perfect but it's still my life. When I was getting used to the idea to my double cure, I was mugged and almost killed while I was still in the room. I guess you can say that I have more lives than a cat. 
It's now five years after my stem, my first stem cell transplant. I'm still without leukemia, but then that's not the reason why most of you are listening to me today. It is that after five years without HIV medications, I still have no trace of HIV in my body. I have been poked and biopsied from head to toe by European and American researchers. The doctors have taken samples of my spinal fluid, anal mucosa, and anything else that they could think of, but no virus anyway. Um, I, I found out here um, several months ago that um, I don't even have any um, antibodies in my body. And uh, uh, I told the professor that at the university um, that he didn't believe me. Um, it's kind of like um, he wanted to prove the doctors here wrong. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so he did a, another blood test and told me that I had too many down here. <laughs> to quote Dr. Hooter in the December 2nd, 2010 issue of the Medical Journal of Blood, as he is talking about me, quote, it is reasonably it is, it is reasonable to conclude that cure of HIV, of HIV infection has been achieved in this patient, end quote. Cure. After 30 years of dealing with a disease that has killed more than 30 million women, children, and men, somebody in the medical community has said that word, said it, hell, published it. <laughs> cure. In, in a... In a, it will be, be great one day when there is one, sort of way. He meant today. Now I know that my treatment is not about to, be, about to become a commonplace procedure to cure HIV. It is dangerous. It is expensive. But my experience has shown that a cure is possible. There are now more researchers willing to focus on cure rather than just treatment. After all, I'm not, an, uh, I'm not some abstract concept. For those of you with cynicism or battle fatigue from your long fight against HIV, I hope my experience brings you a renewed hope. For me, my experience has always also shown me benefits of an effective public health system and the synergy it can achieve working with those in ac ac academic medicine. <coughs> As I finish, I would like to share with you two dreams I have. My first one is for me. I admit, I really want to, to receive an invitation to Berlin's current mayor to speak there. Um, he's probably going to be voted out of office soon. Um, probably. Um, probably, um, well, the election's um, the middle of September, and I was just in Berlin, and, and uh, there were posters up all, all over the place, and um, for some reason they don't think that he stands a chance to be re-elected, unfortunately. He is, um, he's, he's the one that came out and said, I'm gay. And uh, um, and that's that's good. Um, yeah. I want the opportunity to thank Berlin and Germany for what they have done for me. My second dream is not to be the man who stands before you and says I'm cured, but to be the man who stands before you and says we are cured. Thank you for having me today.
Um, what's the question, Jimmy? What is going on with my leukemia? My leukemia is, um, since the second transplant, my leukemia has um, been in check. And the doctors say if it goes for, the longer it goes, the more <coughs> likely it is that it won't come back. Um, and that's been, at this point, um, three years. So, I'm getting close to, oh, yeah, they say after five years, you're pretty much sure that it's not coming back. So, are you continued to be studying all the time now? Is this been yeah. an ongoing thing? <laughs> yeah, the professor that I was talking about, he, he said, don't let them take so much blood. <laughs> and he, he took some as well. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm being, I'm, I'm patient at San Francisco General Hospital, and um, I'm in a study called the Scope Study, and uh, I've, I've had um, lots of blood taken, um, lots of blood that's supposed to be sent to NIH, NIH and um, also, uh, um, a colonoscopy. I've had colonoscopies. I had. I've had colonoscopies in Berlin and, and now here. So they haven't found anything. Any HIV virus. Question: They take any uh, prescription drugs now? Um, for <laughs> diarrhea. And um, I've had problems with um, neuropathy. Like, um, my, per, primarily my feet are kind of numb, feet and toes. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm taking a, um, a psychotherapy drug to make me happy. <laughs> <laughs> Most gay men are also HPV positive. Um, I don't think I had it. Um, I'm not really sure if um, it would have wiped it out if I did. What naturopathic substances are you taking? Um, I take uh, multivitamins and uh, um, I took a lot of vitamin C for a long time. And uh, I probably should have continued that because I've got a cold, obviously. And uh, um, I still have an immune system. By chance, do you know your donor? No. Um, I talked with um, the professor about that, and he, he said that um, he doesn't really want me to be identified. He's denied the, the meeting. Um, actually, after, usually after two years, both parties have the option of one or of saying they want to meet um, meet the other person. And uh, I could have said that, but um, I found out that it's not possible. Because I'd really like to say thank you very, very much. Timothy, what was the process of finding the donor? Um, they, well, they told me that they would probably have spent about a million euros because <coughs> um, the tests are very, very costly. Um, I, they go and look, look in um, the microscope at the CCR, or no, the um, CD4 cells and um, look for um, CD, CD4 cells that are um, absent the CCR5 receptor. And anyway, I was very lucky that they found one after just 72 people. I was actually thinking, oh, this is going to happen. Did they, did they specify when they were looking for a donor that this is what they were looking for? And I think so, yeah. yeah.
So were one you, more one more question, guys. Sorry. Were you educated about all this medical stuff going in? Is it because of your own advocacy that you think you're the only man alive here? Or um, uh, did you just happen to be in the right place at the right time? I don't think that I've been told several times that it, um, this wouldn't have happened in the United States because um, because uh, people are too scared of the the word stem cell transplants and uh, and I think I was very lucky to be in Germany at the time and um, yeah. Thank you, Sam. Sorry to...